Good morning, everyone. We are in unusual times, to say the least. Uh, when I was younger, I would have never thought we would meet on Sunday and nobody would be here. Who knows? But God does. But the good thing is, God still draws people to his house. Regardless of what we believe, God is in control. Pastor Marcus is away, um, and they will be returning, and he will be here for next Sunday. Uh, but for today, uh, he is away, so I will be bringing the message that God has laid on my heart. But we're still continuing in the Psalms of Summer. The Psalms are very interesting because they are a song of praise. And when you speak about praise in our world context today, it's either one of two classes of adults. You're still working or you're not working. You're retired or you're working. And I did some study and I looked at quite a few sites when it comes to praise. And I'm still working. I got five years to go. I'm looking forward to that fifth year to go away. And I can say that every day is a Saturday except for Sunday. However, that's not here yet. So I looked at employees. As an employee, there are certain things that you like and certain things you don't like from your boss. And here off of this website that I went to that I printed off this morning is the top five employee recognition statistics. The top five. Number one, half of U.S. employees are unsatisfied with their job. Half. That's quite a bit. Number two statistic, half of the U.S. employees are considering a new job. Wow. Well, if half are not satisfied, then the other half are going to look for the job, right? The third statistic is the main reason why employees leave their job is lack of of recognition lack of recognition that's where we're at today we're gonna to look at Psalms and praise of God and how we recognize him and as adults we want recognition because it makes us feel good we get that pat on the back by somebody else that you're doing a great job now it doesn't it doesn't put any more money in your wallet but it does give you a substantial feeling of, hey, I'm accomplishing something and somebody notices. But the real true secret is we don't deserve any recognition. We don't. We are here at the purpose of the creator who is God himself. He created us for a purpose. And that purpose is for him to tell us because we all have a purpose that he has wanted us to do. Today we're just going to look in Psalms, and we're in Psalms 148. Psalms 148. Uh, before we get started, let's pray once more time. Our gracious Lord God and Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today. And Lord, yes, circumstances are beyond our control. And Lord God, the one thing we do know is that you are in control. Nothing catches you off guard. Lord God, you have seen the beginning and you've seen the end. You've seen it all. And Lord God, that's why we depend upon you. We praise you today, Lord, even during these unusual times, for you are worthy of praise. And Lord, as we look at your word today, may you receive the glory May those who hear the word, Lord, hear from your Holy Spirit. God, may you hide me and glorify yourself as we look at your word today. I pray for those who are traveling today, Lord, that you would bring them safely home. And Lord God, that's when we meet once again, God, it will be a glorious time together. We ask, Lord, again, for your blessings on your word, and may you receive the praise you deserve this day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Psalm 148. Psalm 148. My Bible says that this psalm is titled, God Praised by All Creation. God Praised by All Creation. 
Let's begin in Psalm 148, verse 1, and we'll read it through 14, and then we'll look at it a little bit closer. Verse 1. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all nations, you princesses and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints of Israel." the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Now we see in this that creation is praised by, all creation is praising God. This psalm examines four types of praise and where it comes from. We see that praise comes from heaven. We also see that praise comes from the universe and then from the earth. And lastly, from mankind. This psalm begins with praise the Lord and ends with praise the Lord. We see that in heaven God is praised. Revelation chapter 4 verses 4 through 11 says, surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal, In the center around the throne were the four living creatures, and they were all covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. And the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around even under his wings. Day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne And worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And by your will they were created and have their being. Now we see that this was an image that John was able to see when he was given this vision in Revelation. And he recorded this vision so that we would have an idea of what it's going to be like and what is actually happening right now. God is being worshipped in heaven as we speak by those 
who know him. They know God. They know who he is. They know his almighty power and his mighty works. They know that he has been and always will be. God is forever. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. This is also reiterated in Psalm 103, verses 20 and 21. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly host, you his servants who do his will. So we see that not only do they know God, but they do his will. And isn't that what God has called us to do? His will? And when we do his will and when we are obedient, God is praised. See, it's not just about coming to church on Sunday and saying, thank you, God, for what you've done. It's because he deserves praise because of who he is and not just necessarily for what he does. He created each and every one of us for a purpose. And our purpose is to praise him for he is our creator. And we know that he is our creator and he does wonderful things. Even now during this time of uncertainty that is circling back around. We do not have to fear as believers We know that God knows what's going on. But he still deserves praise. We see all the angels and all the heavenly host are gods. They know him and do his will. And not only do they know his will, they carry out his will. And by doing God's will, God sent his angels to announce the birth of God in the flesh, the God incarnate, Jesus Christ. Think about what the shepherds saw that night when they were visited by the angels. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14 says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. We'll celebrate Christmas in less than six months. And this was so appropriate. God wanted mankind to see what true praise of God is like by sending his angels and his heavenly host in front of shepherds so that they could see what true praise of God is. True praise. We can only fathom what that is like, but we are to praise God with who we are and all we are. And sometimes we fail. Sometimes we fail miserably, but that's okay. God knows. God knows our heart. And not only in heaven is God praised, but God receives praise from the elements above, from the elements. You ever been out in the country where there's no lights or in the mountains where it's dark and you look up And you just see a cascade of white speckles all over the place. And you're like, where'd that come from? Because you're in the city and you look and you see that bright one and that one and that one. That's about it. But you get out in the darkness and the light that God shines on the other celestial bodies that he created. 
are too fathomous to number. We can't even gather how many there are. But they worship God as well. They worship him. Psalm 148, verses 3 through 6 says, Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. He gave a decree that will never pass away. God created everything. Then you know, a lot of people would say, well, did he really create everything? Yeah, he, he created everything. Now, you hear and you'll see where it says on tags, things that are purchased, it says man-made. Actually, nothing is man-made. It's man-organized, man-combined. All man does is take what God has created and put it together to make something else. But he didn't create any of that. He just fashioned it so that it has a purpose other than what God created it for. But man cannot create anything. Everything that was created, God created. John chapter 1 verse 3 says, Through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Everything that is made, God created. Psalm 19, 1 through 6 tells us, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voices go out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. You know, I've never heard that cry, that voice come forth. But God hears it. God hears his creation praising him in all that he does. And not only do the elements above praise the Lord, he created the earth to praise him as well. Psalm 148, 7 through 10 again tells us, Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, Small creatures and flying birds. Every morning around 6 o'clock, I set my alarm so I can get up to go to work, get ready to go to work. But before my alarm goes off, usually I hear the birds chirping every morning about 6 o'clock. And I always think to myself, God, are they on a time frame? Are they on a timetable? What is that? And I've come to realize that the birds are praising God every morning. They praise him every morning. They're giving him a song of praise. And we know that they praise God. We do know this because we see Matthew 6.26 tells us, The birds of the air do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet our heavenly Father feeds them. They thank God every day for what they have. Unlike us, when unfortunately a lot of times we complain, ah, oh, if I just had that. Oh, I have, if I could just get that done. And when you're at work, 
If you don't get one part done, but you get other done, they don't look at what you did. They look at what you didn't do. It's amazing, isn't it? We're always desiring more. But yet the birds who get fed by God himself praise him just because they're being fed. It is amazing how God takes care of everything and he takes care of the animals as well. But we also see God's hand in weather events. And just recently through, through Jacksonville, we had a storm that came through and it was the tropical storm Elsa, I believe it was, and that tornado that formed out of Elsa and it just kind of jumped along and skipped along in town here and destroyed things. And then it kept on jumping and jumping and went to Arlington and across the river and into Georgia and destroyed things there at Kings Bay Naval Base. That didn't catch God off guard. God knew what was going to happen. Man doesn't know what's going to happen. No matter how much technology we have to determine, well, I think that we, we can figure out what the weather's going to be like. Not so. But God knows because he knows the weather he sees what's going on. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 12 through 13 says, But God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he thunders, the waters in the heavens roar. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. And he sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. God allows the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. God does not play favorites. Because he created us all. He created us for a purpose. And he does not favor one over another. God's creation praises him whether we acknowledge it or not. And not only creatures from the sea and weather events, but also his mountains and trees praise him as well. First Chronicles chapter 16, 33 tells us, Then the trees of the forest will sing. They will sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. God's word tells us a lot about who he is in his character. And he also tells us a lot about ourselves and a lot of things that we don't like about ourselves. But God created everything to praise him, everything to worship him. Not only does his creation praise him, but again, man was created to praise him as well. Psalm 148, 11 through 13 says, Kings of the earth and all nations, you princesses and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. If you notice, it starts at the top. Those in power, all the way down to those who have no say. From kings to children. We are to praise God. We are his. Mankind from infants to kings are to praise the Lord. Psalms 8, 1 and 2. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. To silence the foe and the avenger. But we do know his name is majestic above all the earth. Always. Psalm 103.1 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Do you see the theme of Psalm 148? It's praise. God not only is desirous of praise, but he has earned the praise. He deserves the praise. 
We are to praise him with who and everything we are. God created man for a purpose. And that purpose was to praise him. And when Adam and Eve were created, and before sin came into the world, God walked with Adam and Eve. It was supposed to be that relationship with God that we were to have. That one-on-one close relationship. But when sin came into the world, God could not worship. We could not worship God close by because he cannot look upon sin. He cannot look upon sin. And we are sinners, and you are looking at a sinner up here. Believers know God, and they should desire to praise him. John 1, verses 10 through 13. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. God does not make man praise him. God does not force his self upon us. He created creation, all the heavens above, the heavenly host and the angels. They praise him because they know him. They know him intimately. God created us to know him intimately. But he doesn't force us to praise him. And that's sad. But when God gave us free will, he did it for a purpose. When I was preparing this and I sat down on the couch uh, after I had done something outside, I was kind of hot, so I sat down and I turned the TV on for a minute and turned the channel, and the movie Bruce Almighty was on. And when that movie first came out, I thought, how blasphemous. How blasphemous is a movie like that because only God is almighty. So I sat down and I watched it. This was years ago, and I've seen it before. And when I saw it, that's how I felt. And at the end of the movie, the whole crux of the movie is that only God can be God. Nobody else can. Morgan Freeman, he played God. And Jim Carrey was in it, and he had had this issue with his girlfriend. And they broke up, and he wanted her love. He wanted her to love him. And God gave him the power that he had. He said, I'll give it to you so you can see what it's like. It's not easy. And, of course, he let everybody win the lottery, and he only got a dollar apiece because everybody won the lottery. Things like that. You know, he answered yes to everything, and that's not necessarily the right answer you should get all the time. But he wanted the affection of this one girl. And so he goes to visit her at school, and she's like, what are you doing? And he's standing up on the wall, and he's going, she says, what are you doing? What are you doing? He says, I'm trying to make you love me. And with Morgan Freeman, he says, to Morgan Freeman, he says, how can you make someone love you when there's free will? And Morgan Freeman playing God said, when you figure that one out, you let me know. God does not force his will upon us. He wants us to choose him through his son, Jesus Christ. He has put it out there. Jesus died for us. Who else did Jesus die for other than the human race? There is no other. He died for his creation. He died for the human race who he desires to have that relationship. And yet, man thinks he can do it himself. Every word in God's Bible, every word points to Jesus Christ. God does not force his will upon us, but he does want us, he does want us to worship him. Mark chapter 8, verse 34 says, 
Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, and this is Jesus speaking, if anyone, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Deny yourself and follow me. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to make everyone follow me. No, he said, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. God gave man free will. And so, because of that, man desires his own will in his own way. However, however, Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. You know, when I was a kid, I was growing up, and my parents would say to me, or my dad, oh, goodness, he would ask me a question, and I was guilty of sin, and I'd say, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And my dad would look at me. Boy, did you do that? Yes, sir. There's some quality about your parents that know, they know when you've done something you shouldn't have done, and you deny it. Just like God, he knows who we are. He knows what we've done. We can't escape it. There's no excuse. Mankind has no excuse. Because God's creation reveals who God is. Man is without excuse. It is better if we honor and praise God as his child because even those who don't accept Jesus Christ as Savior will one day acknowledge him. Romans 14, 11, It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will confess to God. You know, that doesn't say everyone who believes in me. It says every knee that means every one whether you're a believer or not you will bow to God and acknowledge who he is wouldn't it be better to acknowledge God as saying God I am not worthy I love you and I praise you and your son is my savior God I thank you but we're not even worthy to do that but yet, we will all give an accounting one day. That day may be quickly approaching because we don't know when that's going to happen. We do know this, that God is so deserving of praise. Jesus said in Luke 19, 37 through 40, when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. The stones. If we do not praise God, the stones, God's creation, will cry out for him. And how sad is that if man reaches the point where we do not think that God is worthy of praise. God is worthy of all praise. All praise. 148, chap, Psalms 148, verses 13. Uh, 
Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. In verse 14, he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 148, 14 tells us that he has raised up for his people a horn. And that horn raised up is Jesus. That horn is for us that God has sent Jesus Christ, his son, to us. And that's to praise praise for all of his saints and of Israel and the people close to us. To his heart. People close to his heart. First Peter 2 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Psalm 100, 1 through 5, as we close. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Praise the Lord. When's the last time we really praise the Lord? You know, we praise God for a lot of things. Getting us through hard times. Getting us well when we've had an illness. Being with us in times of desperation. But have we praised God while we're in those times? God deserves the praise. There's a purpose for what God allows to occur in our lives. And we may never know that purpose. But God does. And it's for us to see that he receives the praise. You see, God is worthy of all praise from all his creation. For God is the creator He is the sustainer, and God is the Savior. He is God, and he is God alone, worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. God, you tell us you want praise. Lord God, most importantly, you deserve praise. For Lord, you have done all things. You have created all things. Your creation cries out to you, Lord, to praise you. And God has even said that if man does not praise you, the rocks will cry out. Man is without excuse. As much excuse as we like to use, Lord God, we know that you are our creator. Lord, I pray that as we live our lives, Lord God, and the things that you allow us to go through, things that you walk us through, the things that you're with us at, Lord, God, that we recognize your power, your ability, and who you are. God, there's no secret. If man would open his eyes and look to you, they would realize how much 
we desperately need you. God, this fellowship is going through some tough times now. And Lord, I just pray that your healing hand would stretch forth upon them. God, that you would show your power. And Lord God, may we marvel at your works. For we marvel at your creation. And Lord God, we marvel that you would send your son Jesus Christ as Savior. And now, Lord, we ask as we finish this worship service that you would be glorified through the remainder of this time, for it's in your holy and precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.